Well, it's a vice grip for pliers, and pliers for a wrench, a wrench for a hammer, hammers everything else. It just don't seem to make much difference. I sure do like him, but he's hard on equipment. What is it? What is it, Jade? What is it? Stop scratching your balls on Felma. Oh, it's pretty heavy. Get it open. We are getting close now to the pieces of the puzzle. Road runner. So what's happening here, kids? We are going to show you an old motor, and we're going to show you how to uh, inspect one and um, what to look for. We're going to pull our old one apart, but we already know that it's sort of beyond economic repair. It's not beyond repair, and we might even fix it just for something to do and use it as a spare, but we've actually gone all out, and I've thought of all out. Um, do not eat. Wise. Actually, what is in this? Maybe seals? Seals. Oh, that's the oh. breather for the... Oh, yes, this is a nice little filter and breather hose. Sexy. Yeah, pretty clever. It feels really nice. And your fittings. Now, I hope there's already a drilled and tapped hole for that, but we'll see. Supposedly. So that's that's a big part of the reason why we've got this wench. So Ooh. I'm hoping that it's uh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So Oh yeah. <laughs> Kate's having a... So if you look in there kids, I might just show you actually this would be an interesting comparo. So my theory was this. This is my theory, and I'm starting to think I'm pretty bloody on the money. Okay, there is a slight difference in size, actually, but it's absolutely fuck all. Ah, oh, sorry, we can't swear on camera. No, I think we swear plenty on our channel. I don't think people are worried. I don't think children are watching anything about the I don't even know design. what the difference in size would be, or why it's different. But look, put it this way. The theory was, Kate, that these motors are pretty similar. This has just got the anti-corrosion coating. But what this doesn't have is that anti-corrosion coating, which should help. And you can see here, well, we'll pull it apart later, but it's, it was, it's actually still working, so it probably is worth rebuilding. We're going to make sure that we seal this surface here really well, because this is where it mates to the winch housing. And also where these bolt goes We're going to, this time... It was a real issue last time. ...seal this. Now, it, I've got to say, this feels already more tightly sealed than that. Mm, well, even these... Don't you think? On there would help compared to these little puny little washers here. We'll have a look at the brush housing and see what it looks like. Welcome to White Ox garage number 225. Today we're at our dining room table, um, which is the perfect place to work on winch motors. And Jade's going to go through with you how to inspect your motor. Yep. So, <clears throat> well, so with a motor, there isn't really that much to a motor. We're obviously putting a new motor in. Um, if you're just pulling your old motor off, have a look at it. Some things to look for. So this is the old motor, which is very, very seized. Just Jay's just had to smack the living shit out of it to get it off. Um, but you can see how the brushes work. Spring loaded as they are. So they just push against that and because they're made of carbon or graphite, um, they're a natural lubricant and they can easily move around the, and, con there and conduct um, to power the motor. So that, that's all there is to it though, that's what I'm saying. This is the business end of an electric motor, here. And as you can see, look, these brushes are okay. The commutator would just need a little bit of a clean up. There's nothing really wrong with this motor. The housing is corroded, we know that. We would pull the armature out. We would. Ha it, it could. There's nothing wrong with it. It could be rebuilt. It's got plenty of life left in, and we will rebuild it. But that's what to look for. So we're we're just sealing up here. We're going to seal. We're really going to be trying to be vigilant about water. So we're sealing around these terminals. We're fully sealing this. I'm taking the 
approach of um, zero water ingress, um, which obviously does have the risk of if water does get in, it can't probably get back out, but it does have a breather on this. But it just shows here what, and it was still working, water contamination there, you can see what it can do. And um, oh, the corrosion on the outside. That's inside here is your um, shoes, your pole shoes. And then here, we won't go into a full explanation of how DC motors work. That's a whole another thing. But this is your uh, armature, which you can see in this motor is all covered in a sort of a polyurethane corrosion inhibitor as are the shoes and the inside of the housing there and then shaft and this is your commutator here and the two bearings so really if you're going to be looking at a motor if you're pulling your motor off have a look for any water ingress contamination evidence which should be pretty obvious and there's not much else apart from that have a look at your um, commutator here and probably give it a clean with just a bit of scotch bright or uh, if it, you know, a bit of um, um, stuff, a bit of, what are they, like wet and dry, like um, emery cloth. Yeah, with a bit of, so just sand it back with a bit of uh, emery cloth or a bit of scotch bright, but, um, and then, yeah, maybe inspect the bearings and the brushes. But if the motor was working when you pull the winch apart, then it's safe to assume that it's working, you know, it's going to be fine. So the brush is obviously here. So that's the other major part of the... So that you've only, you've really only got this in there and then your brush assembly. So you can see that the brush assembly is, is, is a separate sort of housing that kind of sits on the back. And it's just carriers really with... Um, I don't know what the best way to show you this would be spring loaded and and these sit in there really in the springs just keep the um, brush a little bit of tension on the brush on the commutator but it's actually because the bru these brushes are made out of carbon um, you know they do wear but they are self sort of carbon has a natural lubricity to it so it's a, it's a good choice of material for a brush some of them actually have wear indicators, but I don't see any on these. But basically when the brush gets pretty worn, like down towards, you know, you can see here where it's, I mean, these are new brushes, but if, if as it wears, it's going to wear up along there, you know. And, um, you know, eventually you won't have enough material left. But bear in mind that a winch motor is not generally a motor that runs for long periods. A brush... I would expect brushes in these to last a very, very long time. If my previous motor was not water contaminated, I'd probably do nothing more than just give it a bit of a blowout with compressed air, have a look at the brushes, possibly pull the armature out and clean up this commutator surface, possibly change the bearings, but that's about all. There's not much really to do. They're quite simple as you can see, that's pretty much everything there. That's the whole constituent of the motor. Yeah. Yeah. So then the question becomes, and basically you've got to just shove that in. So we're just um, trying to get these. All right, so. Right. So when you do it, just check those pigtails here that they're okay. We're not going to bother corrosion protecting that, but so this is the end housing. Now it's got an O-ring, so again, it's a bit tricky. That's the bottom. So that's got to line up with the with the bottom. That's the bottom now, obviously, with the earth. You know, the earth being on the bottom. It's a spring washer, it's a wave washer. All right. Yeah, basically it's what you call a wave washer. Yeah, so that's that's working okay. This is what we're using, this red RTV gasket maker. 
just run it around here. Now hopefully, the two of us should be able to get that o-ring on. Don't worry about getting silicon everywhere, that's fine. It all cleans up. Okay. Alright, so we'll just run that through, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't happen unless the housing's out of alignment. Then. Yeah, slightly out of alignment, but you should be able to, you know, almost podger it. Oh yeah, so it's got a... So this is a good idea to do this, so we can now see that the housing's got to rotate that way. There we go. Yeah. That should come through now. And just pull out. Because that's it, that's finished. In fact, everything now is finished and ready for assembly.